Hello, this is Jan from Red Toad Art Studio. And today we are going to learn how to draw this cute little bird on a fall tree limb. This is an easy picture to draw and paint, but it, it is a little time consuming because there's several times in here where you will need to let paint dry. So let me tell you what you'll need. You'll need a pencil, an eraser, I have two Sharpie permanent markers. The brand doesn't matter as long as they're permanent markers. And I have an ultra fine point, which is a fine line, and a little thicker line in the fine point. You will also need some different paint brushes. I will need my watercolor paint brush. I have a larger one to do the wet on wet method with, and then a smaller one to paint with. And then at the end of this, we're going to use acrylic paint for some of our dots. This is just plain old craft paint. I'll show that to you in a moment. And you will need something to paint acrylic paints with. You will also need water. Some water to activate your watercolors. Now, I have several very nice sets of watercolor paint. In fact, I was just given a beautiful set of paints for my birthday. But I do like to use Crayola watercolors for a lot of these on my site because this is all a lot of people have. And I want to show that it's possible to make beautiful pictures with Crayola watercolors. Now for the craft paint you will need a few different colors and I just get mine at my local Walmart. This is an apple barrel brand of craft paint and these are very inexpensive. They're under a dollar per bottle. You'll need a yellow. I have one that is just called yellow. A darker red. I'm using a cardinal crimson. An orange. and This is just orange. A white. And a black. Now you could also use gouache paint for this if you have a set of gouache paints. But we're not going to get into how to use the gouache paints for this one. It's very simple to use these craft paints that are acrylic. Let's see, you will need some tape to tape your picture down when you do the watercolor part. A palette to put your paints into a paper towel or an old rag and if you have a stray piece of watercolor paper you may want one of these just to test your colors out when you mix them and of course your watercolors if you have a good set of watercolors go for it but I do want to show you that you can do some good work with these I think that's about it if there's anything else as we go I will let you know so there are several steps to this picture. First we need to learn how to draw this bird and I'm going to show you step by step how to draw the bird and you may want to practice on a scrap piece of paper first and then we will ink in part of the limb and part of the bird. We will ink the black in, in fact some of the dots we can use ink or we can use uh, our black paint and I will probably use ink and uh, then I won't really need my black paint. And then after you've done that, you will need to do some wet on wet watercolor background. And that will need to dry for a little while after you put that down. And then you will paint in the gray limbs with your watercolors. Let that dry. And then after that's dry, you will put your dots in with your acrylic craft paint. So let's get started. drawing the bird. Now it looks like that bird would be hard to draw but it's very simple. Just a few shapes to get our bird in. Now the first thing I want to do though is put a mark where the branch will be so he is going to be standing on that branch and this is just a branch that 
is kind of dipped like this. Now I want you to draw these fairly lightly in case you need to erase. But you need to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go in and make these a little darker so you can see these lines on, on camera. So there is my branch line. Now I want my little bird to be standing on this branch. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of a tilted teardrop shape. Like this with a curved bottom. That could be a teardrop. You know what it makes me think of is those um, Halloween candy corn. If there were stripes here, it'd be a candy corn shape, wouldn't it? Right above this, we're going to make a circle. Now have that circle come down and touch the top of your uh, candy corn there. Just like that. Here, we're going to put kind of, um, well, it's going to be almost, it would almost be a triangle. Just like that. This part will not stay. Now, I think you recognize everything we've got here. We've got the body of the bird, the tail, and the head. It already is looking like a bird, isn't it? So, now, let's come up here and connect the head to the body. Smooth that out like that. Doesn't that look nice? Let's add a beak right up here, which is like a triangle. Now, let's come down and add a couple of lines for its legs, just like that. Now, right here, we want to add some wing lines. And it's another teardrop shape right here. And let's let that come in like that. Let's get an eye on this guy. Come in from the beak and just come over a little ways and make a circle. A little circle there. There's our eye. And in the center of that circle is a little black dot for the pupil of his eye. Now, on the beak, come through the center and now we want a little bit of light color here that we don't want to cover with our ink. So I'm going to make a spot right there that reminds me not to color this all solidly. Good enough. Let's move on down again to a little more on the wing. Let's do some lines like this for feather lines. Now, on the tail. Come down here and let's make some tail feathers. See how I did this little bumpy part? Just two little bumps there at the end of every feather. And then come up and attach it to the bird. There we go. Now, let's fatten these legs up just a little bit. These will be solid black, so you don't have to worry too much. And I'm going to put a little bump right here to show where part of his claw is showing on top of the branch. I think our bird is pretty well done. Let's erase a few lines here. This line right here, where we connected the head to the body, needs to go away. Now this probably won't show through your permanent marker, but it might show a little bit. So it's a good idea to go ahead and erase. And then right here below and above the wing, this above the tail, and this limb line that is going through the tail. Now you can erase this better after you have inked this before you actually start to paint. Now basically our bird is done. Now let's draw in a little bit more for our limbs. 
Now remember, since we're going to be taping this down and painting it, we will have some tape here to give us a white frame. So don't go quite to the edge when you do your drawings. But let's make limbs here. Let's fatten this limb up and then have it branch off in several different directions. Now you can do these branches wherever you want to. Just come along and have it branch off. One thing to remember about tree limbs, they, it gets thinner. The limb itself gets thinner and skinnier the farther away it is. So don't come down and get skinny here. Be sure it's fatter here and gets thinner here. And then just work off several branches. This will be our black branches. Let's do another branch here. And do these wherever you feel like doing it. Just be free with these. Don't get all up tight. Let's do one here. Don't worry about making these look absolutely realistic. This is to be a fun picture. Just relax as you put these in. See how neat our picture looks already? Now we will be putting some gray branches in here when we paint. So we want to leave a little bit of spot for those. I think that's enough branches. In fact, I think we are about ready to do the next step, which is inking our picture. All right. I have been looking at my picture, and this is a stage to check out that everything is the way you want it. And there's a couple things that are bothering me. One thing that's bothering me is this bird leg here, and I want to change my bird leg. So I'm going to erase it. Now, you probably have a perfectly good bird leg on yours. But mine was making me feel uncomfortable. So I'm going to make my bird leg more like this. I'm not even sure I like that one. But it should turn out okay. And this last tail feather is a little fat to me. So I'm going to make it a little skinnier at the top. And erase that line. So just check out your drawing and see if everything you like. Because once you put it in ink, it's going to be that way. Now I'm much happier with my picture. So we need to move on to the inking stage. So we're going to outline all of this with our ink. And then we're going to come in with our heavier marker and fill in the black parts of the bird and our branches. But let's ink the outlines first. So just come in with your fine marker and go over the pencil lines that you want to keep. Simple as that. And depending... Okay, there's a few things I want to show you here before I get any further. I missed putting a small little chest color here. Another teardrop shape will be great for that. And be careful and not draw. If you did like I did, I drew clear out to the edge of my paper. I don't want to ink there. So I need to be very careful and not go clear to the edge. And then after I tape it, I can come in and finish those ink marks if I need to draw them a little bit to go up to the edge of my uh, tape. And remember that because it's very easy to forget to do that. I have done that in the past many times. Just gone clear to the edge. And then you'll have ink marks in your border where you don't want them. You could go ahead and tape this before you ink. But then it's harder to maneuver your piece of paper to where it's comfortable for your inking. Because to do good inking, you need to 
move your paper so that you're in a comfortable position to move your pen. So see how I didn't go to the edge with my ink marks? Okay, I'm going to finish this and be back with you in a couple seconds. Okay, I have finished my fine liner except for this little spot here that I keep wanting to forget. Now there's a few spots I can put some dots. I want some black dots here on the top of the wing. And I'm just going to do that with the marker. Just randomly place different sizes of dots. And then fill them in so that you have your dots. And a few dots scattered here on this breast of the bird. Alright. Now if you've noticed, I didn't trace all my lines, the ones that came down to where the small limbs hooked into the larger limb. If you drew them with your pen, it's fine because when you uh, fill this in, it won't show. But you don't have to draw all those in. In fact, I think our next step will be to erase and add some dot circles for our black. So let's erase all of our extra pencil lines. All right, I have finished erasing. Now, I can still see some of my pencil lines, and that's because I drew fairly heavy, so you could see it on camera. If you drew these lightly, they will be much easier to erase than mine were. And then be sure that all of your little lines meet up to the spots they should. I have some that didn't. And so fix those if you need anything fixed. And now we are going to... Fill in with black all of our branches and all of the bird through here. Now it seems funny to do that, but we're going to add dots to our bird all over it. So it doesn't look overwhelmingly black once you add this. Now we aren't going to color in the wing or this little breast piece. We want to leave that white so that we can watercolor it. So that is us fill in all of this down on the legs and the black branches that we have and then we'll draw in some circles for these black dots and fill those in so there is a lot of pen work on this piece so I'm going to start out with my fine point and do these ends of these branches where it comes to a point with this fine point pen now this stage of the drawing takes a while. This probably takes longer than anything except for the drying stage. The painting stage does not take too much time at all. So you need to have patience with this stage of your drawing. Just take your time and get all this filled in. Now you could do the whole picture with your fine liner. It will just take longer than if you have a thicker pen that can come in here and do the thick spots. I'll show you right now. Come over here. I use my thicker Sharpie. And if you can use a new one with a good point, I would do that. And then just go on in and fill in the whole branch with black. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my branches and I'll be right back with you. There, I've finished my limbs. I'm ready to start my bird now. And as I said before, you want to do all of this area around here. Leave the wing free. Leave the little breast piece free up around the eye and around the beak. All right, finishing up my bird. And I think the only thing I need to do now with my pen is some black dots. So I'm going to take a look at this. We have a black dot here and one around this area, a couple over here, and some smaller ones. 
So let's just go in and randomly put these dots. Don't worry too much. And don't worry about perfect circles. Just do the best you can. Now, as I said, you can do these with paint later if you would prefer. But this saves you having to have black paint. And while you've got your pen out, you might as well make use of it, right? And get all your black done at once. If you don't have the acrylic paint, it's hard to get a good black sometimes with your watercolors, depending on the brand of watercolor you have. And your pens give you a wonderful black ink. Now you can always add some of these later if you see a spot you want it. You can go over your paint with your markers, which is very handy. As long as you don't do it while the paint is wet. All right. We are ready to tape up our picture for painting. You have done the longest and hardest part already. And I may not have mentioned you do need something to tape your picture to. And you can use a clipboard or something like this or a board. Since I have this craft mat under here, I am just going to tape directly to the mat. Try to go along your lines that you did in black. Okay, now before I do anything else, I want to make sure all of my branches where it meets my tape is nice and sharply colored in. And it looks like they are. All right. Now, you will need to mix up some of your watercolors. If you're using a Crayola set, mix up a little bit of brown and some yellow for kind of a... Um, yellowish dark color in the background. Now this brown isn't going to show too well, but it's a brown, a fall colored brown to put in the background. And then activate your yellows, your orange. And let's see, that's about it if you're not going to paint any black. Oh, activate your black for our branches that are gray. So that will be your next step. Now, if you've done anything with this, you've done wet on wet already. That's where we wet a portion of our picture and drop water into it because we just want a soft background. So we want to wet most of the area around the bird. So you need to get your nice fat brush, get your water, and already have that yellow paint, the yellow and brown mix. Now, if you have a nice big set of paint, you should have a light tan already in your set and just use that. So we are going to get this nice and wet. Now I'm using 140 pound watercolor paper because again, that's the one that's easy to pick up at most of your stores. If you have some 300 pound water paper, hey, go for it, because that's good paper. But again, that's more expensive and a lot of us don't have that paper. So I'm trying to use what you are likely to have on hand when you see this video and think, oh, I'm in the mood to do that bird. And also, while I'm doing this, you don't have to do it in fall colors. Think about spring colors or summer colors and try that. Now remember too, paint can't go where you didn't have water unless you just spill it on it. And the fact that we're just dealing over black, we are pretty free to not have a lot of mistakes. So move your water aside, get your paintbrush, get it nice and wet, and dip into the brown while this is wet. And we just want to have kind of like some brownie yellow clouds going on in the background. 
So just dip that in. It's okay to go over your black marker with this. Perfectly fine. We don't want the whole background covered. This is just kind of look like some clouds in the distance. come up here to this corner and do a little bit. I always kind of like to have my corners a little darker color. Now if you're using the 140 pound paper it will start to mountain and valley. It will wrinkle which is very frustrating. If you have your heavier paper you shouldn't have as much of a problem but I am using the light paper myself. So just know that that will happen. That's perfectly natural for this paper to do it. And it will flatten back out as it dries. Now, this step, you definitely need to wait for this to dry. And this can be the frustrating part about watercolor is waiting for things to dry. We do need to let this dry, but if we haven't gotten this part wet, we could go ahead and do this right here as long as we have a good division of dry paper here. So let's see. If you don't, just wait and let this dry before you do this step. Let's get this wing wet. Try not to meet your other wet spots on your paper and dab into your yellow paint and we're going to make this a nice yellow wing. Okay, if you go over the black, that's the thing that's forgiving about this picture. And let's also paint this little breast piece. Now, while this is wet, clean your brush, go into your orange, And add some orange paint here to the tips of the wing. Now my orange almost dried out on me. Let's see. We can get that to happen. And a little bit up here on his shoulder. And on the tip of this breast piece here. All right. Now we could also do the eye. Now the one I did has a red eye, but I don't think it stands out too well. So I think I'm just going to do a bright yellow eye on mine. You can choose the color you want. But while I have my yellow going, I'm going to do my eye here. Now, we have to wait for this to dry and we need to put in our gray branches after this dries. So keep your watercolors out until you've had a chance to do that. And if you find your paper is buckling and wrinkling and you get puddles, you can pick up a little bit of that with your brush and just wipe it off on your uh, cloth. Okay, I will be back with you in a few minutes and uh, we'll put some dots on this. Hello, my paint is now dry. It has a few little humps and bumps in it, which means it's not totally dry, but it's enough for me to go ahead and put in my gray branches. So mix a little bit of black into a little puddle of water to make a gray. Now you might have a good gray in another set that you can use, but with our Crayola Black we need to dilute it in water to get a gray. Here is my gray. It looks very black, but it'll be gray when we use it on our picture. So we are just going to go in and add gray branches in behind the black ones to fill out this area. And if you want, you could go in and lightly draw these, but you don't need to. Just go in with your brush 
and do some light branches in the background. Don't be scared of it. Just like you did with your pencil. Just think you're using your pencil. The very tip of your brush. If you're using a, a decent watercolor brush, the tip will make nice fine lines for you. Okay, I have put several little gray branches around, and now we need to let this dry. This should not take too long to dry if you have very nicely diluted paint. So we're going to let that dry and come back and add our dots. So while that dries, we can get our acrylic paints out into our palette. So don't forget to clean your brush. You want to get that black out of there because if you dip into your paint with black in your brush, it will really smudge your paint all up. So be sure and clean your brush well. And always store your brush with the tips either straight up. I can't do that here, show you straight up. Or laying where they're not touching anything. Don't store them in the water or tips down because you don't want to just that point and after you clean it form your point there so next get your palette out and add a little bit of your acrylic colors a little bit of white and I mean just a little bit it does not take too much to make these dots better to put too little and have to add than to too much I don't imagine you could see my white there. I'm going to add some yellow. Be sure you shake your acrylic paints up. They do need to have a good shake. There's some yellow. And I'm going to do some orange. And some cardinal crimson. Now, you can make your dots with several things. It's really hard to just use a regular paintbrush, but you can use the end of your paintbrush. Let me show you here. Look at the ends, and there's all different kinds of sizes of the ends of your paintbrush. Like this is bigger than this one. I want a fairly small one to make some white dots in my uh, bird's head. So I'm going to dip straight down into my paint, straight down onto my bird's head, and see what wonderful dots those make. Isn't that neat yes and then I want some dots down along his back now I'm gonna leave spots for some bigger dots and if you're getting a uh, dots that aren't good just go dip back into your paint and I want some kind of like little straight lines in his tail you have to dip in about every dot or every other dot now what else could you use you can get on Amazon they have 
little things to make dots with that's used for dotting rocks. And they have kits that will have something like this. And you can dip in the ends of these. Here's a big fat one. Here's a thinner, skinnier one on the end. They have several. Here's a real tiny end. And here's a little metal end that is super tiny. So I want to put a dot about this size of white right in here. So I will do the same thing. I will go straight in and make a dot just like that. Straight in dot. See what wonderful dots that makes? Now if you don't have that, there's something else that will do the same thing. Find a pencil that either has an eraser on the end and it's nice and flat or a pencil that is flat wood. Let's do a dot. Well, let's do another color dot. Let's do a red dot somewhere. Dip it straight in the paint and then straight down on your painting. And look at the wonderful circle the end of your pencil will make. So you don't have to have the fancy tools. Just find something in the house like a pencil or an eraser or the end of a paintbrush and dot with that. Now if this is the method you're using and there's only one size and you want to make a nice big dot, get it full of paint, straight down, and then while it's down, circle with it a little bit and you can make nice big circles just like that. Now it's a little uneven. But that's okay. We're not worried about perfect circles. I'm going to do another one of those right down here. Now it takes this acrylic paint to cover up our black if we go over it. That's why we don't use watercolor to do this. Now your gouache may do fine if you have some of that. Now I'm going to take my brush Acrylic brushes are a little stiffer than watercolor brushes. You can get packs of brushes like at Walmart that have different kinds in them. And the soft ones that feel like um, pet fur are for watercolor. And the stiffer ones are for uh, acrylics. And most of the packages will tell you what they are. Now I'm going to show you what the bigger one of this set would do rather than taking the end of a pencil we can dip down in this be sure the end is covered and go straight down with this and we automatically have a nice big red dot now you want different sizes so I'm going to show you what this one would look like this will make tiny dots not tiny, but small dots. Having these are very handy if you like to do dots on, on your paintings. Okay, let's make some orange dots. I'm going into my orange. And I think I want to make an orange dot or two here on my bird, too. And that's probably all I'll fit of that size there. So, how about some yellow? You see, the little bit of paint I put out there, I'm going to have paint left over, which always frustrates me. I hate to waste paint. I should have done a little less. Let's try some different sizes. We probably need to have a bigger yellow dot somewhere on here. We'll go back to our pencil. I'll go straight down in my yellow and we'll do a yellow one right there. That one came out well. We might even want to go off the edge of our paper and just have a partial dot. There we go. What have we missed? We need another few small dots on our birds. So I'm going to try this one and see what that does. I want a little bit of red on my bird. I like this one. 
So just look up for painting rocks. And it's very economical to get a kit that has all different sizes of these, and they're wonderful. But again, you don't have to have it. Just find something around the house that will do this for you. Random dot all over. I'm not sure why, but I really like these dotted pictures. It's not realistic, but it's cute. Let's see, maybe I should random dot a few more oranges around, and we're about done. And remember, you can do different colors for this to look like different seasons. Okay, I think, I think I want a couple of tiny dots right here in the breast. Maybe just one. We'll see what we can get here. That's about all that's going to fit. You know, I think all we have left to do is dry this. Now, this isn't looking too good here. I'm going to come in with my paintbrush and fill that in over the black. And now we just need to let this dry. And this will take a few minutes, but not too long, before you untape it and sign it. So, this is a perfect time now to clean off all your tools while it's dry. I'm going to show you a couple more pictures just for ideas. I tried one in blues. Now, I don't have the gray branches in there, and I think the gray branches would help fill it out. But this gives kind of a wintry look with doing kind of a pink color with blues and yellows. Or I tried to do a spring one. I'm not totally happy with it, but it is an idea. We have our birds sitting in a nest with spring flowers and greens, blues, reds, and yellows. So there's so much you can do with this. We also need to see we have a, a winter, spring, and fall. We need to do a summer one so you could have a lot of green leaves on the summer one and a nice blue sky or a stormy sky. There is so much you can do with this technique, and I hope you will try some of these out and that you have enjoyed doing this. Okay, my picture isn't totally dry. Be sure you let yours get totally dry, but I want to untape these for you so you can see it with the borders. Now, remember, when you pull this tape off, pull away from your picture very gently so that you don't tear your paper. And be careful about leaving this tape on for like weeks. If you have a picture that isn't finished that you need to finish later, you might want to untape it and retape it when you start work because the longer the tapes on there the more it may tear your paper which after you've done all that hard work on a picture you really don't want to happen so just remember to be gentle when you remove and don't leave it on for weeks at a time you could leave it on for two or three days probably but don't leave it on too much longer than that and there we are. There is our finished picture. I hope you've enjoyed drawing this cute little bird sitting on a branch in the fall of the year. And I will say bye-bye for now, and I hope I see you in our next video. So, bye-bye for now.